Let's take a quick look at the fragmentation controls. Now, fragmentation is a really super cool feature uh, made for chopping objects up and um, making them, <laughs> turning them into lots of little pieces. The, uh, the animation controls in Pro Animator are really, really nice for crafting these swirly, uh, swarming, zippy, <laughs> and many other adjectives type of um, animations. Uh, they're really easy to do, and when you've got lots and lots of pieces to work with, it makes it really super fun. So you select a pose, and then you come down to the animation controls and go over to the right where we have uh, this little tab here, which is our fragmentation controls. Now the easiest way of getting fragmentation is to click on a preset, pick something, um, and uh, and then it turns it on and you see your object gets chopped up right here. Now let me set this back to zero and uh, give it a little spread so that you can see that our object is indeed chopped up. So what we have here is you see we have two chops going on. So this basic one that I picked has, um, uh, which is called uh, large cubes, chops it into two vertical and two horizontal chops. Now, if you have a pattern that you really like, the easiest way to increase the number of chops is to use this control. And what that does is that basically just adds one or subtracts one to both the horizontal and vertical directions. And you end up with the same general look, but many, many more objects. Okay, so that's the easiest way of doing that. Uh, if we go here to like small cubes, you know, it has many more chops to begin with. The, uh, and we've got lots of other fun things here. Jungle Stripes is a, is a vertical with some rotational offset to it. And if we increase the number of chops, you see it's the same general look. It's the same pattern, but you just have more pieces to it. Okay, so that's the easiest way of jumping into this, is you pick a preset and then increase or decrease the number of slices to give you more or less what fits the project that you're working on. Okay? so. When it's time to jump right in there and handle all this stuff on a custom basis, that's when you click the options control. And these are the fragmentation options. And this shows you that we have free three fra fractures. And each fracture adds one on top of the next to give you a bigger and bigger sort of picture. All right. Um, this is how you do this. Okay, so we have number of slices. Actually, I left increase slices set to three. So let me set this down to zero. Otherwise, it's going to be adding to it. And we'll look at this from the front and go back in. So now we see that we have four slices, one, two, three, four. And this has some rotational offset too. So uh, there you go. One, two, three, four slices. Gives you a total of five pieces. Um, but that's the number of slices. So you can increase or decrease the number of slices here. Click the Apply button so you see what you're going to get. And um, that's basically how you start putting together your own, <clears throat> your own fragmentation preset. So this first thing, this first value here sets the direction. Um, if you want a horizontal slice, you can do that. Uh, vertical slice, depth slice goes, you know, obviously in the depth direction. Uh, or you can dial in your own type of slice here. If you want it at some crazy angle, you can do that. And then um, you know you'll get your object sliced up into lots of little pieces from a different direction. So that's very useful. Uh, if you need like the italicized sort of look, you can go and chop it in this direction, and then slide all these pieces on. Bup, 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 you know, giving you lots of motion and a great sense of depth and feeling in your animation. So that's the uh, direction of the slice. The position offset. What this lets you do is this lets you move the slice slightly left or right up to the maximum being being one full slice okay that's why it's in a in a percentage so if we set this on random and uh, hit apply you see it's going to randomly choose some thin slices or some big slices they'll never really get too much bigger than this um, or you can do a very small vari variation if you wanted it to be done like that okay so that's the position ran offset which gives you a, uh, a controllable number of slices. Actually, one of the cool things here is that if you set it to alternating and then you set it to small and large, this is going to create a pattern for you. Um, let's try that again. Position offset, alternating position. Yeah, that seems right. Let's get us some more slices, see how that works. 
Okay, there we go. There we go. We're, our slices were just too big. So here you now you see we've got this, uh, we have a pattern working for us. We're a small fat, small fat, small fat, small fat, etc., etc. Like that, that's the alternating position type of, of uh, slicing. So rotational offset, what this is going to do is change the angle of the slice one at a time. So if we put this down to a number that's going to be easy to look at and then change the amount, say we go to random, this will then give us uh, a random amount of angle for every particular little slice in here. So if we increase it a lot, uh, you can get, you'll see you've got a one, two, one, two. It's going through and randomly picking the angle for every one of the slices that it's doing. So you can get some pretty odd chunks and pieces going on here as you're uh, slicing through your object. If you put it on just a little bit, you'll see it just looks like it, like the slicer wasn't quite, um, wasn't quite pixel perfect. Okay, so that's what the randomize does for you. Now the other cool thing we have here is called skip slice. And what this one does is it will decide as it's going through with each slice whether to slice it there or not. Uh, so say for instance it, it was making the decision about this slice. If it skips it, then these two pieces would actually end up being glued together. And then it goes on to the next one and decides again, and the next one and decides again, and the next one and decides again. So if you use a very small amount of skip, you might get one or two big chunks amidst a whole bunch of slices. Like here we end up with two chunks, two big chunks, actually three, one, two, three, and then a whole bunch of small chunks. If you increase this more, you'll end up with more big chunks. And in this case, we're getting two or three chunks fused together. If you increase it more, you get even bigger, more variation between the uh, the big chunks and the small chunks, okay? So when you take that and then you couple it with the vertical slices, let's see, um, oh, we're doing verticals already, so let's make this one horizontals, and then turn this on. You see, now what's happening is it's taking, if we turn this guy off, you see it's it's got a fat piece here and a fat piece here and a fat piece here. When I turn on the horizontal slicing for here, you see there's still that fat column, fat column, and fat column, but then all the other um, horizontal slices are nice and regular. So we can skip slice those too. So if we do that, then it's going through and for every sub piece, not the entire slice, but for every time um, it slices one and then it takes the result of that and then slices that. So you get all this really nice variation amongst the bigger slices. So when you take something like that and um, Let's say we apply it here. That's pretty good. So a little bit more skipping. Yeah, yeah, that'll be that'll be fun. Okay, and we come back here. Now we can start doing stuff with this from a designer's viewpoint. That's lots of fun. So uh, let's turn off the bunch, and then we can do things like this. Let's just randomize the Z. And what we have now, you see, is we've got those pieces sliding out forward or backward. Uh, we could. Um, if we just do this a little bit, you see you end up with a small amount. And of course, obviously, the more random you get it, the more fun you can have with it. So this doesn't look anything like our original uh, sphere. But you can imagine taking this and setting up an animation here where you go from here down to zero. So basically, you see what's going to happen is it's just going to slide together like this. And then you could uh, you could give it a random cascade order with a fair amount of cascade to it. So then you see all these pieces start assembling themselves like that. That was maybe a little bit too much, so now what's it going to look like? So you go slide it all together, just like that. And of course, as it's going on, you can put a camera move on that. And you see what's going to happen is it's going to reveal your logo, you know? Or your uh, or your text or your model of anything. You can bring in a model of of a car, and uh, chop the whole thing up, and then have all the pieces reveal themselves this way. Let's spread this out a little bit, like that. There you go. More of a graceful motion. Okay. And of course, if you don't like that random pattern, you just choose random again, and now it'll do it with a different form. Okay. Or you could do other stuff. You could go uh, top to bottom. Okay, and now it'll do all the tops and then end up at the bottom or bottom to top. You know, that looks like it might be more useful for uh, 
for an animation. So lots of fun stuff to play with. Um, of course, these are just arches like anything else. So you can move these guys around and um, um, they don't have to move in a line, for instance. Okay. So let's take this guy and let's go back here and go into our options. And I think that's pretty much um, all that it comes down to. The only other things we've got to talk about maybe is uh, scope. Local does it to the same type of chopping goes to each individual object. Uh, when you've got lots and lots of letters, that becomes mountains of geometry. Um, and maybe you want the chop, for instance, if I have the top of an eye, like the dot of an eye, it's going to get the same number of chops as as a capital B right next to it. So uh, in that case, I might want to switch from local to uh, global, and then it's going to chop the entire word up using whatever the settings are here, uh, but spread across the entire word. So that way you'll, you won't end up with an eye, with the dot of an eye, with lots of little, little tiny pieces to it. Uh, another option here is solid versus shell. When it's on solid, you see it creates the interiors of the objects. Uh, when it's on shell, it, it leaves the interiors alone and only leaves the shell. A lot of times if you have swarming things that are zillions of pieces all moving very quickly and motion blur is turned on, uh, you can leave it on shell geometry and get you know much more rapid rendering, uh, but you won't even notice that there aren't interior pieces because, the, uh, because of the motion blur. Okay. Uh, division type, brick and recursive, that's the sort of thing you would use if every chop is offset from the original. Um, style linear radial is how you get the uh, the cracks like the glass, uh, the glass or um, yeah like glass crack patterns. Uh, random will just more or less randomize where the chops are happening without paying any attention to the fact that there is a certain number of chops. So when you're using regular linear style it's going to say okay I need to do 12 chops across this object that then sets a distance between each between each subdivision. When it's on random, it just completely ignores that number and will then chop and chop and rechop based on however it is that you just set the whole thing up. So there's lots of ways of getting some really crazy looks that are all super cool and super duper easy. Okay, so that's a look at fragmentation controls.